First at four, new video in a hate crime investigation. Please hope this is the clue that can help end one family's nightmare. We're also tracking the investigation surrounding a baby that was left at a local hospital, handed off to a total stranger. And here's Paula. A local school district goes back to school Monday, focused on face-to-face -face learning. Many of the students are telling me they feel like they're being forced to go back against their will. It is our first ever student roundtable where they explain. Hey, Ben. Hey, Paula. The weekend is here and the sunshine is back, but how much of that are we going to carry into the weekend? There is a storm threat and we'll track it for you right now. First at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, Warren Police hope new video will help put an end to a hate crime investigation. Home security video shows a man holding a gun next to the home of the Hall family. Last night, shots were fired into that house for a second time this week. They suffered a series of attacks, including a rock, thrown through a window, slashed tires, and messages of hate written on their cars. They believe they're being targeted because of a Black Lives Matter sign in their front window. Police say they're stepping up their efforts. We do believe that this person does live in the neighborhood, and we're giving special attention to the neighborhood 24-7. I've had a number of the uh, neighbors call, and they're very concerned about the safety of the halls, and they're very concerned about themselves. A $3,000 reward is being offered for any information that leads to an arrest. We've got breaking news. Northbound I-75 near Eureka is closed as police investigate a really ugly crash. State police say one driver crashed into the semi, then two more drivers crashed into the first car. Even though one driver was trapped, no one was injured. Right now, state police advise drivers, please avoid the area. We'll follow and keep you posted. Detroit police still looking for a man who handed off a baby to a stranger and then never came back. They've got a lot of questions. Police say the man drove up to Sinai Grace Hospital yesterday, handed the baby girl to someone asking them to hold her while he parked his car and then drove away. Police say the baby's just days old. They're also concerned for the baby's mother. They're looking for an older model silver Dodge Durango with a gold hatch. The man was seen driving. We'll keep you posted. Friends, family, and fellow officers said their final goodbyes to a Wayne County Sheriff's Corporal killed in the line of duty. They gathered this morning at the Third New Hope Baptist Church in Detroit to honor Corporal Brian Searcy. Dozens of deputies from the Sheriff's Department paid their respects. Searcy was killed earlier this month during an attack by an inmate at the Wayne County Jail. That inmate is now facing murder charges. We are seeing another jump in the daily number of new coronavirus cases. In the past 24 hours, the state reported more than 1,300 new cases. The number has been climbing every day this week. Tuesday, that number was 441. Also today, the state says another nine people have died from the virus. The state's chief medical executive just reminded us yesterday we have to be cautious, limit social gatherings, and keep following COVID precautions like wearing face masks. All right, we need to get outside while we can. Right now, it is blue skies and lots of sunshine. Can we keep that going into the weekend? Let's bring in Ben Bailey with a quick look ahead. Uh, Karen, I would say soak it up while you can because we are expecting to see some sunshine over the weekend, but not quite as much as we've got out there right now. Beautiful, gorgeous blue skies. But even with all that sunshine, the temperature is not that much different than they were yesterday. Mid to upper 60s out there, just a little bit of a breeze, but not all that bad. You can already start to see our next system, which is on the other side of the lake. That is going to be in here tomorrow, and the clouds ahead of it will be streaming in some of those tonight uh, through the day on Saturday. So we've got rain chances in both Saturday and Sunday. Storms possible there Saturday night into Sunday, and some of those could be strong. So we'll run down a marginal risk for severe weather and also some warmer temperatures and even some humidity for the weekend all coming up in a few minutes. Karen. All right, thank you, Ben. It was 19 years ago today. The 9-11 attacks shook our nation. The impact still being felt here in Detroit where local ceremonies remembered the lives lost. And the home of the Detroit police and fire held a memorial service at Campus Marshes Park before noon. Of the 3,000 people who died on 9-11, 
More than 400 were first responders. Prince Edward Adderley Jr., Roll Oak, David Alder, Gross Point. In Gross Point Farms, a service focused on the Michiganders who died in the attacks. The names of all 19 people were read during the ceremony at the war memorial. Now we'll move to the sacred ground of the three spots where terror hit the homeland back in 2001. This American flag was unfurled in New York City at the September 11th Memorial Plaza. Today's ceremonies were impacted by both the COVID pandemic and presidential politics. But the overwhelming message is still loud and clear. We will never forget. Kimberly Gill continues our coverage. Kim. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. Many of the ceremonies were tweaked to allow for more social distancing to keep everyone involved safe from coronavirus. But the remembrances, as you said, did not stop. At the Pentagon, the Secretary of Defense led a memorial there. There was a wreath laying ceremony followed by a moment of silence at 9.37 a.m. That's the moment when American Airlines Flight 77 crashed into the Pentagon. All 64 people on board died and 125 were killed on the ground. President Trump and the First Lady uh, were the first to visit Shanksville, Pennsylvania. There's a memorial there to United Airlines Flight 93. That flight went down after passengers and crew tried to stop the terrorists. The heroes of Flight 93 are an everlasting reminder that no matter the danger, no matter the threat, no matter the odds, America will always rise up stand tall and fight back. This afternoon, Democrat Joe Biden and his wife also stopped in Shanksville to pay their respects. Biden did not make any public comments, saying he would steer clear of politics on a national day of mourning. But the appearance of both candidates was still a reminder of the heated presidential race. So while the visits of President Trump and Biden did not overlap, the former vice president did run into current Vice President Mike Pence at ground zero. Uh, the two shared a rare elbow bump, a rare moment of detente in the 2020 race. Uh, so that was interesting to see. Karen, the 9-11 tributes will continue at 5 and 6. We'll have more on the news then. For now, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Things are not getting better out west as wildfires continue just to spread out of control. In Northern California, the North Complex fire has become the deadliest of the year. Ten people are confirmed dead, and that number could climb as crews search for more than a dozen missing people. At least 2,000 buildings were destroyed in the foothills near San Francisco. Across Oregon, 500,000 people are being told to leave as fires approach their homes. That's more than 10 percent of the state's population. Crews believe hundreds of homes have already burned. Deciding how to reopen Michigan schools has led to some tough choices and some controversy, especially in the Lands Cruise District, which pulls students from Harrison, Clinton, Chesterfield, and Macomb Townships. It focused on face-to-face -face instruction, leading to a teacher rebellion. Today, Paula Tutman hears from the students in this Education for All roundtable. When the district surveyed parents on what to do for a return to school, it reports that 70% wanted face-to-face -face and 30% wanted to go remotely. And so unlike the districts around them, which are choosing remote starts with minimal face-to-face, -face, the Lands Cruz District, the fourth largest in Macomb County, is doing the complete opposite and putting the majority of its educational eggs in the face-to-face -face basket. And those speaking out the loudest are some students. In my situation specifically, I have to go back. Today, our first ever student roundtable. Six students from the Lands Cruz District, Maddie, Mia, and Grant, who say they feel like their arms are being twisted behind their backs to return to face-to-face -face learning against their wishes. We are, I feel like, the most important stakeholders. Like, we are the ones learning at school, you know? Like, it's not the parents, it's not the board, it's us and the teachers. They say they believe the school board was so intent on face-to-face -face learning, the remote options were given short shrift. I just, I can't believe that they didn't even start talking about it till August 1st. For me, personally, because of the honors, AP, and higher level language classes that I'm taking, I didn't have a choice, so it was a little frightening for us to hear that I had to go back face to face when my grandma has long issues and we take care of her. Taryn is doing a hybrid of face to face and remote. They should have automatically thought online in the first place just because if they were listening to the science, it 
would be the safest option. Amir and Ahmad are happily returning to face-to-face -face learning. Well, I um, was just um, specifically just ready to go back to school. And I just personally learned more in the face-to-face in -face environment. Many of these students also believe their district is sacrificing building safety for COVID mitigation. While students will have to wear masks, windows will be opened to let in fresh air. Lockers can be places of congregation, and so backpacks are now being allowed. Because 70% of students will be in the buildings, hallways can get congested, and so students will sometimes move from class to class outside. So now they're just, we're just allowed to have backpacks now. But when we asked like, okay, how are you going to make sure that people aren't bringing weapons to school? They're like, well, if their backpack looks a little too big, we might talk to them. They need to put more thought into that just because obviously the virus is really important, but also if you're going to bring kids back to school, like um, intruders or anything like that are also very important. You may remember that last week we talked to the teachers union for this district and they are not in favor of this move. In fact, more than 20 of them have decided to take a leave of absence. Some of them an unpaid leave of absence. Got a lot of emails on this one, Karen. Lots from parents, a lot from students coming up at six o'clock. We're going to talk to the superintendent who will answer some of these students questions and concerns. Look forward to that. All right. Thank you, Paula. Help Me Hank keeps us posted on many recalls, but a new one is pretty unusual. Why thousands of SUV owners are being told to park their vehicles outside, but you need to know. Also, one of the most powerful companies in the world wants you to do this. While well, you might get a recruiting message this weekend. Stick around. Trending story is coming your way. How this local haunted house says they're ready to scare you safely. As long as we keep everybody separated and we do that naturally, we should be fine. Monday at 6 a.m. on.